Here's how to plan a simple trip using RV Life Trip Wizard, part of RV Life Pro, which also includes the RV Life GPS and Campgrounds app. At the end of this video, you'll have seen how to create a simple route with multiple campgrounds, rest stops, and other points of interest along the way. RV Life Trip Wizard can be used on a laptop, tablet, or even a phone, but we recommend initially learning on the bigger screen first, and everything we show you here will be done on a laptop. Tablets and phones will have the same functions, but note that some menus and buttons may have different locations depending on screen size. To begin, head to our website. Once you've logged in, you can start your new trip. We'll give it a name and enter in our starting date. Next, you'll be asked to give your starting location. Don't skip this step. We'll be starting from Daytona Beach, an important tip when using RV Life Trip Wizard and typing into a search bar. After typing in search terms, you'll see suggestions pop up under the search bar. You can type in an exact address or a campground name as well. Before hitting enter or clicking on anything, make sure you select the most appropriate suggestion from the list. Next, you'll see your trip settings. This video assumes that you have already completed your initial settings upon registering your account. If not, go back to our YouTube channel and watch the settings video first. In most cases, you won't need to make any changes here. We'll just confirm that we are set to RV safe routing, which should be your default setting. After you confirm your settings for this trip, you're ready to begin building your route. For this trip, our big destination will be Mount Rushmore. Remember that when using the search bar, type in your search term, but don't just hit enter. From this list of suggestions, you can use your mouse to select one of these campgrounds. But what if we don't know it yet or don't see it on this list? We can choose Mount Rushmore National Memorial, and we will get a purple icon on our map. Then we can zoom out and see all the campgrounds surrounding our destination. We can then use the filters to help us narrow down our choices and also use the sort function to help organize our options. Once we add this to our trip, we can start to see our route take shape. If at this point you do not see your starting point and a destination in your itinerary and on your map, we recommend going back and starting again. Now we can build out our trip, starting from our origin in Daytona Beach. There are a few really useful features that will help us plan along the way. One of the first things you might notice is this big bullseye that centers around your selected stop. This is your driving radius. It will help you visualize where you'll be at the end of a drive day based on your preferences. If you're not familiar with it yet, we recommend heading to our YouTube channel and watching our driving radius video as well. The advanced radius option gives a more accurate picture based on actual roads and speed limits, so we'll use it for this video. Using the driving radius, we see that at the end of our first drive day will be somewhere around this area. We can view the campgrounds along our route here and again use our filters to help us choose something suitable. When we zoom out, we can see that our driving radius has now moved along with us. Making our way toward Mount Rushmore from our last stop, we'll be going through Atlanta near the end of the second drive day. We'll select another campground a little bit past the city and add it to our trip. RV Life Trip Wizard also gives you the option to alter your route slightly if needed. In this case, it has already placed us on the bypass around downtown Atlanta. But if we wanted to go straight through on I-75, we can use the drag route feature to pick up our route and move it onto our chosen road. We can see now that our route has moved. If we change our mind, we can delete the waypoint and the route will go back to the original. Now we can see that coming up next, Nashville is right along the way. 
maybe we want to spend some time here. In this case, we may want to adjust our filters to take advantage of certain memberships like AAA or Good Sam. We can then see what options we have and choose one to add to our trip. If we click through the menus too quickly, we might accidentally send this stop to the end of our trip, which is the default. However, we can easily fix this by dragging it to the correct order in our itinerary. We'll use these same strategies to continue adding campgrounds all along the way to Mount Rushmore. If we look at our entire trip now, we can see all our campground stops from our starting point all the way to Mount Rushmore on our map, as well as on our itinerary. At this point, we now have all of our overnight stops planned so we can turn off our driving radius to make it easier to view our map. By now, you've probably noticed these fuel warnings, which based on our chosen settings are showing up all along our route whenever our V-Life trip wizard calculates that our tank will be running low. We'll start with a fuel stop on our first drive day. We can research the points of interest to find fuel stops along our path, and we can even add filters to see our preferred gas stations. We'll look at this one, but before we add it to our trip, we might want to switch to satellite view to get a better idea of the station's layout. If it looks good, we'll add it to our trip. The fuel station will now show up in our itinerary, but we need to make sure to let our V-Life trip wizard know that we are topping off our tank at this stop. We can see now that our next fuel warning is right after our first campground. In this case, we might decide that we will fuel up at some point during this stay, but after we disconnect from the trailer. Instead of adding a new separate fuel stop to our trip, we can edit this stop to let RV Life Trip Wizard know that we are topping the tank while here. If we zoom out, we can see the rest of the fuel stops we'll need along the way. Again, the next fuel warning has now moved farther along our route. We are still using the satellite map view and zooming in to bet the location and to make sure it's suitable for our rig. We can even use the street view feature to really help us decide whether the entrances and exits will be RV friendly or if there are any clearance or maneuvering concerns. If it looks good, we can add the fuel stop to our trip. Otherwise, we'll keep looking until one looks good. Then we can edit this stop in our itinerary to show that we are topping off our tank here and our fuel warning icons will move accordingly. We'll go ahead and take care of the rest of our fuel warnings now, either by adding a new gas station to our route or by planning to top off during a campground stay. Our itinerary is filling out. Maybe in this leg of the trip, we want to add a rest stop to break up this drive. We can clear the fuel stations from our research and instead look for rest areas. The satellite view looks good, so we'll add it to our trip. We know we'll be staying near Mount Rushmore for a few days, and maybe we want to stock up on our way to the last campground so we don't have to worry about groceries while we're there. We can go back into the POI area one more time to search for a Costco, Walmart, or Sam's Club and add this stop as well. Let's also check out this area for fuel stations, since we missed one last fuel warning before our final campground. The satellite view looks okay, but we'll do one last check with Street View to make sure we're comfortable with the clearances.
It looks good, so we'll add this to our trip. Here's the full trip we've created in RV Life Trip Wizard, taking us from our starting point in Daytona Beach to our final destination at Mount Rushmore. At this point, you may want to use one of the automated round trip options to get back home, or continue building your return stops manually, but we'll leave ours as is for now. The itinerary will give you an overview of how far and how long you'll be driving to get to each stop, the number of nights you'll be staying at each campground, and approximate costs. Now we'll do one more check of our route using the elevation feature. We can see a pretty clear increase in altitude in the later part of our trip, but once we show the gradient, we see that it's just a 3-4% to grade for a small section of the road. This doesn't look like a big concern in this case, but it can be a good idea to double check your routes to be sure. And that's our overview of how to create your first trip using RV Life Trip Wizard. As always, when you're ready to navigate your trip using your phone or mobile device, just open up your RV Life app and you'll automatically find all your active trips ready to get on the road.